So the other day, a subscriber asked me to review the Siege Ultra Magnus for his birthday. There was no way I was going to be able to get the video out on time considering it was literally that day, and I couldn't get it done in time for his party because I had the rest of the videos for the week partway through development. Sorry I couldn't be on time for your birthday, dude, but the request did intrigue me because I've never quite adequately covered this figure. It got one of the shortest segments in my Siege retrospective, and it's been mentioned once or twice after that in the most minor ways possible. So yeah, I'm actually really interested in doing this one just on my own. Not that I wouldn't have done this otherwise. My willpower just kind of shatters under the weight of wanting to be nice to my viewers, so even if I didn't want to do this one, I'd probably end up doing it anyways. Please be gentle with me, everyone. It takes no effort to guilt me into doing a requested video. Hell, I basically generate all of the guilt by myself. It's practically my superpower. Anyways, happy birthday to Nemesis Prime. And let's talk about Ultra Magnus, shall we? Before I start talking about the actual figure, let me just say that before I ever got him in hand, I thought the core white Optimus Magnus robot was going to be a heavily retooled Siege Optimus Prime. If that were the case, this thing would be like an 11 out of 10. Sadly, however, it's not. They really missed a trick not doing that, or at the very least, not making the armor compatible with the Siege Prime, because I can get why they'd be worried that if they did that the other way around, it might lead to fewer sales of the Voyager Prime. Not that it stopped them from re-releasing this mold like four times. You might think that I'm going to be hard on this due to my hatred of parts forming, but not particularly, no. Yes, parts forming sucks, but they are doing a thing with it here, and it's not just lazy, so it's quite understandable this time. This is going to be an interesting one, because not only does this guy have an abnormal two robot modes, but I specifically have two really distinct flavors of Ultra Magnus here. I have the base one, which I put through a serious upgrade program to get it to be its best possible self, and I have the unupgraded spoilers inside Ultra Magnus, who is meant to represent him after he died in the show. Ignore the fact that his torso doesn't have a hole in it the size of his torso. The look of each is both distinct and striking. I'm not big on upgrade kits unless I think the figure was already worth the money, and Magnus here is no exception. This guy was absolutely worth it before I gave him the leg extensions and the sticker upgrade. I will say that while I find the longer leg to look a lot better, it does result in his already questionable proportions becoming even more wonky. Normally, he looks like a guy in a padded suit, but like this, and he just looks like he's got really short arms. The legs do look proportionate to the body, though. The added sticker detail is also quite awesome, and I think the combination really makes the mold shine. But his hands come across a tad tiny. It reminds me of all those times you'd see the Megazord grabbing its sword, and it was clearly just a regular human hand in a silver glove with a shoebox around the wrist. If you are familiar with the stickers that I used, you may notice the chest windows don't have theirs, and that's because I think it's cool that you can see through them. Head is kind of strange. It's absolutely Ultra Magnus, but like a younger version of him? It's a softer, slimmer thing, missing his classic aviator's look. I like it, but at the same time, the Kingdom Ultra Magnus with its correct head tempts me, even though I already have two others. As for the dead version, I got this because I had no idea what was in the spoilers and side box. I guess dead means black shoulder and head pylons, and dirty pants with guns whose barrels aren't painted, missiles that are covered in rocket fuel residue, and actually less battle damage to the chest, as antithetical to the whole point of this thing as that sounds. I'd say the biggest disappointment with the whole figure is the lack of remolding. Like, it would have been hilarious and totally worth the price of admission to have an Ultra Magnus with a giant hole running through it. But then I guess you wouldn't have been able to pretend it was anything other than dead. At least give us the busted up pylons from the show, anything more than just a repaint that came with a pink rung. Man, I worry the spoilers in Sidebox royally screwed kids that didn't know any better, or whose parents didn't know any better. Like, hey little Timmy, we got you a box with a secret present inside. And what is it? Oh, it's the same figure you already have. Man, I'm sure that must have happened, and I'm sad for little Timmy now. God damn, my sense of empathy is overdeveloped. I'm feeling sorry for the concept of a person. Aside from the much shorter legs due to the lack of an upgrade, the only thing I have to say about this is that maybe it would be a good idea to Frankenstein the chest of these two and swap them. Normally, I really like the siege battle damage, but it's so weirdly reversed here, and there's so little of it on the normal one, it just doesn't fit him. Of the two of these, I absolutely prefer the normal one, though that might change without all the work I did to him. Armoring and, I don't know, what's the word for de-armoring that won't make me sound like a total nerd? De-armoring these guys kinda sucks, but only kinda. I can easily see an alternate reality where this is a colossal pain in the ass, kind of like getting these guys into car carrier mode, but we'll get there eventually. The biggest problem I have with this is how the butt grill works, but more importantly, how the head folds away to put the armor on. Not only is it more of a hassle than is ideal, but it also carries the smell of being a faux former. I mean, like this, I know the core robot has no head, and it's just weird. The process on the upgraded version is actually significantly worse, because these clips that are supposed to hold the legs in place on the upgrade set are made out of a ridiculously hard and stiff plastic when it needs to be soft and springy. As a result, the legs don't actually clip in like they need to, so the leg armor constantly wants to fall off. The look of the core robots are a similar story to the look of them in their armored mode. The dead one is even less unchanged than the armored version, except his crotch is entirely black, and that really hurts the look of this thing if you ask me. He's just bisected by a strip of black. Also, the inside of his chest window isn't painted, and that does have at least something unique going for it. It might be less good, but it is interesting, I'd say. And weirdly enough, the face is painted all the way up to the brow. Somehow, I'd say this makes him look more aggressive and a bit like Hotspot. The upgraded one has an extra step where you transform the legs to get them shorter. And the difference here is obvious, with the significantly brighter colors. My favorite part of the whole upgrade set I did to this guy is the blue chrome faceplate. That was a pain to get in, though. He's also got blue ears. In armored mode, head can only look up and down if it's facing forwards. It technically has some backwards butterfly, though in this state, it's limited to the point of uselessness. Elbows and knees can pull a reluctant 90. Thighs are ratcheted on both, with the dead one having much harsher ratchets than the buttery smooth ones of the normal one. The geometry of everything really limits the leg motion backwards on the unmodified dead one, but with the longer legged one, yeah, it's still super limited, but less so, you get two whole clicks out of the ratchets instead of just one. 
though it does add a second knee joint which allows you to get a much deeper bend. Without the armor, posing is barely different, though the legs can go all the way back and you actually get some usable range out of the backwards butterfly, so it's a nominal improvement. Plus, the core robot head actually gets a little more range and some sideways tilts. Outside of all of that, this is an average siege figure with maybe slightly less useful feet than normal. Transformation on this guy is where he falls flat on his face. For starters, it just involves a heap ton of parts forming to get to the armored mode and the car carrier mode. And while that's forgivable on this figure because it's doing a thing and it's not just lazy, that aspect of it is still completely not fun. And then once you get past that, the actual true transformation is just about the most basic thing I can think of. One dollar knockoffs have more complicated transformations than this guy. Almost any G1 figure is more complicated. And really, he's only this complex because of a few unfun superfluous steps. Really, it's a completely wretched transformation, though I can see how it might appeal to people not jaded by tons of experience. A nice thing to say about it is that it does let you make a kind of powered up mode for Optimus if you don't put on the chest piece and head, and the base truck mode sucks something truly awful. It's just so half-assed. People like to mock the regular Optimus Prime for having feet hanging off the back of his alt mode, but this is so much worse. And the arms are still just the arms. They do literally nothing but hang out on the back. And the sides of the truck are so uneven. This just flat sucks as a truck when you don't add the trailer. Combining the trailer is not a fun process, and it's made all the worse on the upgraded version because the clips that are supposed to hold the back together just don't work due to the lack of having any spring to them. And the fact that they pop out with little effort while also being a bitch and a half to put back in. However, the ultimate result is much more satisfying than the normal truck mode. While yes, you can see right through a lot of the trailer to the awful truck inside, it's greatly masked and it's hard to really see even when you're trying to. It's very big feeling and pretty cool looking. It's disappointing that you can't store anything inside of it without disassembling the whole thing, but it's fine. I bet someone really wants that, but I'm okay with not having it. It's a great update on the G1 look and absolutely better than Kingdom's odd bisected truck mode. Again, I use a word that I normally wouldn't twice in one review. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the Kingdom Inferno review. Anyways, this is a really solid figure. Yeah, posing's not great, and the transformation is grade A garbage, but it's a really satisfying design with a lot of interesting parts to it. It looks the part, it's both the Optimus Magnus and the Ultra Magnus, so Hasbro got the white repaint out of the way without actually doing a white repaint. It's not the best, but it's cool and it's fun, and I really like it. But this ain't no Micro Masterpiece. It doesn't have to look good enough, if it were more accurate, it would still be too bloated, and the posing isn't there. This is just a good chug figure, and that's not a bad thing to be. One is not better than the other, just different. And that's not half of what I have to say, but it's enough of what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you'll enjoy listening to me waste your time.